Hello people and welcome to another new location in this new house. This time the basement, complete with my adolescent cry for help, these LED string lights. It's a rainy Sunday evening in Nashville. I've got a warm cup of tea. So good. Egyptian licorice tea. Trust me. And I am sitting in this blue recliner. If you follow me on Instagram, you know. This chair has been a saga. It did not start blue. This was a tan micro suede chair that I attempted to paint and now it just feels kind of, I don't know, kind of like a school bus seat. But if you're wondering where I've been for the past few weeks, it was mostly renovating the upstairs of this house, but a big part of that was trying to paint this damn chair blue. And I succeeded in making it blue, but it also rubs off on your clothes a little bit and it feels terrible. But one of my very favorite artists ever was actually in town this past week, Brennan Edwards. And we did a little impromptu blue chair session. Yeah. If you can't tell that I'm a ball of stress by the bags beneath my eyes. I posted a little clip of it on Instagram. I don't really know if I should start putting performance videos on my YouTube channel or maybe I can repurpose my second YouTube channel for that. I don't know, you guys can let me know, but at some point I need to post that video. But first, and this really takes priority, I need to talk about Zach Bryan's new album, his self-titled album, his fourth LP. Because A, I love Zach Bryan, was early on Zach, and all of us here kind of are in that same boat. And B, Zach's a full on freaking superstar now. This is set to debut at number one with almost like 200,000 album units in its first week. <laughs> and that's just insane numbers when you think back to four years ago. Yeah, it was like August of 2019 when I interviewed him and Deanne had just come out. It was blowing everyone's mind. How far he's come in that time is truly wild to think about. But I feel like I have made so, 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 so many Zach videos over the years. And I wanna kinda get back to my roots. I'm just in a weird mood, guys. I'm a little bored with the YouTube format. I think that's why the house project has been so entrancing is it's just been something different to kind of think about. But I kind of want to go back to basics and do a full on album reaction. Like if you go all the way back to the beginning of my channel, what I used to do. So I got my earnest branded speaker right here and I'm just gonna literally play through this album, take what notes I can and talk about this whole thing song by song. I have genuinely not listened to any of it. I have been texted by a lot of people wanting to know my thoughts and I have none yet. But I'm very curious to listen, especially after reading Zach's letter that he wrote to his fans. I've got no grand explanation for these songs. I've got no riddle and reasoning behind writing them and I don't have a bullshit rollout plan to stuff it in front of as many people as I can. I just wrote some poems and songs that I want to share because I think they're special. Some of them are heavy, some of them are hopeful, but more than anything, what's most important to me is that they're all mine. If people listen to it, I'll be grateful. If people don't, I'll still be grateful because I got the chance in this life to be original when it mattered. I'd like to say that I do not take any of this for granted. As some kid with a guitar from Oklahoma, I am so grateful for each person that cares enough. My life has been a journey of ups and downs and I wanna thank the people who have kept the course with me while never backing down to anyone or anything no matter the day. Most of our lives are in different stints of time, and if we're lucky, we get small moments of joy, of sadness, of love, of hope, and of music. The music business has good and bad, but I'm in the business of writing the experiences of mine and others. All I pray is that someone out there relates enough to not feel alone. I wrote and produced an album that I would want to listen to. I self-titled it because I hear every cell of my being in it. Some of it's slow and low, some of it's reckless, some of it's loud, some of it's quiet, but it's all me at 27. I put everything I could in it and I'm at a loss for words at what a blessing this life is. The cover is interesting. It's a picture of Zach with a cigarette, a very like classic American image. But then it's got this almost Watchmen-like comic book handwriting of just his name. And then there's cross hatching, which kind of adds to the comic story feel of the, the cover. But I'm literally gonna go in order and I'm literally just gonna film myself listening and you know, maybe this video will suck, we'll see. I'd say I've seen some beautiful days. I've walked countless coastlines, I've walked the mountain tops. I... And I think Fear Friday's got an awful lot in common. They're overdone and glory. Such a vibe setter for the album. Zach has this way, even in a poem, of capturing this American spirit of travel, of adventure, of being on top of the uh, Empire State Building, of riding motorcycles. He talks about the recklessness. He calls himself unhinged and distasteful, but also loyal to a fault. It all feels straight out of a Jack Kerouac novel, which I know he would take as high praise given that he loves Jack Kerouac. But man, the longer I followed Zach, the more I believe, and I don't even know if he's conscious of this or if it's just who he is, that he wants to live a legendary life. That he has an insatiable desire to live, to be reckless, 
And I think that plays into how he dates. I think it plays into how he sings. I think it plays into how he behaves. And there's probably a reckless downside to it, but at the same time, something so vibrant and exciting to watch. And what's so interesting about him is to see someone that is at once so unaware that that is how he is, and then sometimes in moments like this, quite aware that that is who he is. He's very Swiftian in that way. First Taylor reference of the video, Zwifties Unite. But anyway, that was Fear and Fridays. That was the opener. I should do a different LED color behind me for every song so it's easier to edit. This next one's called Overtime. Oh, it feels like old Mumford. Hey, the dog, won't you love me down? I'm 50. Ever since I was a child, working for. The steel in that was cool. I couldn't tell if it was guitar or steel guitar. Your songs sound the same. Too. <laughs> Your songs sound the same. That's what everyone says. Asking yourself why. I'll become what I deserve, and you'll be there asking yourself why. Another Swiftian reference. Someday I'll be living in a big old city and all you're ever going to be is mean. Grumbling about how I can't sing. He's like, you keep hating, um, but I'm from a family of workers. And I've been working overtime and I'm going to keep working overtime. Also, whatever is happening in the steel in this song, and shout out Reed Connolly, friend of the channel, if, if that's him. But it sounds like it's on a guitar, not on a steel guitar. Like It sounds like it's like happening on an electric guitar, but it's cool. Maybe it's happening on both. Ooh, and trumpet. Where was I? Why wasn't I asked? This song rules. Ever since I was a child. Okay. Love the harmonica moment. This does kind of sound like summertime blues a little bit. That song's really pretty. I don't fully get it. I think like I'm it's clearly him remembering his mom, I think. And he talks about riding on the coast when she got sick and there'd be a bandana line, tan line on her forehead. That's my favorite lyric. Bandana tan line on your forehead. I'm guessing that means the hair was gone and you know she didn't want the tourists to know. It tells a whole story right there. There's this theme of baptism through it that he says like he was baptized by her cool water and she acted baptized when they were on the coast. And so I guess he's just remembering her and says, I'm dancing for two. So like I'm dancing for both of us tonight. It's just a reflective moment. It's almost like a she's all right moment of this album. It's almost easy to forget now that Zach's relationships are so gossiped about on TikTok and stuff and you always see them and now like always on my FYP I get these things about him dating Brianna Chicken Fry and uh, <laughs> someone said if, if Zach Bryan dates Brianna Chicken Fry does that mean that Zach Brown dates Brianna Chicken Fried. And I admit, I thought it was funny. But it's easy to forget like the kind of humble, small little story that this all started with, which is a, a guy that was so sad that his mom died. And that beating heart is still kind of there in Zach's music. When people talk about Zach's writing, I think they say, it kind of doesn't make sense to me, it's more poetic, and you don't really get it on the first listen. And I think that that criticism doesn't hold as much water in the later part of his career, these last year and a half or so, because I think he's started to write way hookier, and you totally heard that on Overtime, where I'm like, that's an understandable, simple hook. Whereas this kind of is that more kind of amorphous, thinking, poetic writing, which ain't for everybody, but it's certainly for me. I enjoy kind of not fully understanding a song and then listening to it like 20 times and sort of getting it six months from now. This next one's called East Side of Sorrow, and the Turnpike Troubadours album that came out the same day, and I listened to it today and it's good, um, had one called East Side Love Song. So, big weekend for the East Side. I lost you in a wedding room after sleeping in Somewhere on the, somewhere on the East Side of Sorrow Trumpet, baby! Wow. This song is really cool so far. It's literally him remembering, man, I was at war with all these people that said they don't even know what they're fighting for. And it just paints this picture of a young man a bit confused and then broken when the doctor says, I did all I could. But it swings so hopeful uh, where he says, the sun's going to rise tomorrow on the east side of sorrow. So stick out your chest and look west. And then it gets back to that theme of work that comes through in Zach's 
music on a song like Overtime, which is like, look, what can you do other than just stick out your chest and get and head to tomorrow? Um, and then you get the triumph of, uh, of a trumpet. Like, <laughs> there's a reason, I think, that trumpets are ceremonial. They're used at the gates of heaven or when the king is, is walking through. There's something that feels just really bright and hopeful about a trumpet. Do y'all know I play the trumpet? One minute. That was my solo in Louie Louie in middle school. But this song so far, I love it. Did the Navy do him well? Did he wind up sick? I heard turnpikes back together in their writing songs. I heard turnpikes back together in their writing songs. I mean, ironic that this came out the same day as, as theirs, but like, man, Zach, all the shit he took for writing Felker way back in the day. One thing about him is he loves turnpike. And this that verse really reminds me of Oklahoma City where he's telling a friend like, hey, I know you fought on hard times, so you can always come back home. And that's sort of like, he, he's hearing, he's overhearing a friend for whom he doesn't know how things have turned out. And he's like trying to encourage him. And he's like, hey, we can go sing a, we can go <laughs> sing some turnpike together. Tomorrow, somewhere on the east side of sorrow. Ooh, we're galloping. Let it be and let it go. I think I'm inspired by songs like that because I just, I mean, can't relate. Let it go. I'm like, let it be and then just think of it forever. Just never move on. Romanticize your pain. Do you ever get tired of singing songs like all your pain is just another fucking sing-along? I don't think I do. But that's why I'm inspired by Zach being like, move on. Let it go. Let's go west. Track five is called Hey Driver. Featuring the Warring Treaty. All right, man, I'm ready when y'all are. So take me down the road, that's a little bit windy. Hey, driver, pull on over. I'm in a fight with God. Hey, driver, the boys are gambling. That song's interesting, because when I think of the Warring Treaty, I think of these big, kind of like, barn burning soul anthems that are like you, you they always get do that at like country award shows and stuff and it's usually like a more almost like tina turner-ish moment and this was cool to hear them on something so much folkier it's very much felt like inside lewin davis a bit the song itself with its piano and it's kind of like dum 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 it's, it's something very kind of comforting and pleasant about it but the lyric is sort of low-key toxic his dad's like don't make a life out on the road because like then your woman is alone and the kids can you know don't have someone with them, and yet everything Zach is saying in it is like just take me anywhere. I like you know <laughs> take me take me somewhere that feels good, and it's like this deep comfort of kind of being in motion, which I suppose makes sense because other times he he says like on from Austin that he wished he had concrete shoes, but like his nature is he's on the move. And I guess this is the sort of pleasant side of that. But it's also, there's a dark side to it, and he's haunted by it. But um, I don't know, that song's really cool. Not bad in any way, but maybe maybe the least exciting of the ones so far. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll feel different in like a week. But this is my first listen to all these. Okay, track six is also called Fear and Fridays, which was the name of the first track. But I guess that one was a poem, and this one's going to be a song. Love and this little guitar lick. Loving, loving everything happening right now. And ready to drown. I'm revved up, thirsty, and ready to drown is so Zach. Something he's so skillful at. And I think I heard John Caramonica say this the first time when we did like the popcast. He has these sort of moments of bravado in his lyrics where he just says these anthemic phrases. Um, and he's so good at it, but like I'm revved up, thirsty, and ready to drown. That's so one of them. That song is very much carried by the energy of the studio and the live feeling and the camaraderie. It feels very drunk in a way. I kind of felt like at the beginning, it starts a little sloppy and then you get that cool guitar lick and then you get the drum that comes in and it starts building into something more sophisticated. But then it like, starting at the first chorus, when it doesn't kind of hit the way you're like, there's not like really a big drop or something on the chorus. Not that I'm expecting a big subwoofer drop, but I just thought like, it was gonna become something really big and it didn't. It just kind of devolves into like, like kind of sloppy, clappy, stompy, uh, 
drunkenness. That's how it feels. It feels drunk. Um, so much Zach music is about the energy, but that one, I guess, I got a fear deer. I don't know. I don't think that, that one's that deep. Track seven is called Ticking. Ooh, is that like a Dobro I hear? Ooh, I love the feel of this. Immediately. Yeah, that's gotta be Lucas Rudy Jones on the fiddle there. Cutting ties with things that bind my heart to this world is wheels running down the interstate. Ooh, that was so good. The entry into that chorus. That, where, where it's like you kind of have this dropout and you just sort of like swell into the chorus was so pretty. So pretty. It's like one of my favorite things Zach's ever done recorded. So pretty. This song just like in every way feels still raw but like sophisticated in a way that I feel like the last one didn't. Oh my gosh. And all my friends have moved away. Some got jobs and some got love you and I'm willing but I really have to go. That's such a sad statement. I'm cutting ties with things that bind my heart to this world. And I love you, but I really have to go. Like, I cannot be committed. That, that's what I mean when I say he's like, there's this comfort with this dark side, this on the move thing, and it, and it ruins him sometimes. This need to be moving. And he's like, I can't have a long rope. It's hard to hold on to. But he's also quite sincere in his love. He's like, I wish I could be there. I wish I could be with you, but I gotta go. And he just like wants to be seen for who he is, but at the same time, it just sounds like a confusion with the very, very fast rise to fame. When I, I interviewed him freaking four years ago, and I asked all these questions right when it first started, like, you know, were you, how's it going? Like, are you happy that everything's blown up? And I think about that interview sometimes and how all those questions were too early in the career. Uh, to ask someone that he was still used to know, like, wow, I can't believe people are listening to my music phase. But some of the questions maybe were prescient. Like I, I should have done them now, not four years ago. But oh. dude, this is mine. This is my jam on this album. Ooh, and we get a nice transition into a bridge. <laughs> Not really a break. <laughs> what he did there, he said, the thing about long ropes is you can't hold on too tight. And in this last part, he said, the thing about high hopes is you can't hold on too tight. I mean, of the songs we've heard thus far, that's my jam. Just that entry where he says, wheels, and like, oh, it's so pretty. What does it remind me of? Almost like Souls Like the Wheels by the Avett Brothers. That's almost what it reminds me of. I can't think of exactly what it reminds me of, but... Man, that's such a pretty entry. What a like a introspective, sort of sad song. Track eight is Holy Roller, which features Sierra Farrell. I ain't never been a holy roller, but I found God in your eyes. It's interesting, it's not like a duet, it's not like a back and forth duet. She's kind of pulling a Stapleton and just kind of adding some gentle harmony on top of Zach. And the perspective is very much from a singular point of view. From sundown to sun. That song's pretty. I feel like it's very Zach. That's what people say Zach writes like. He's like, oh, I'm not good, but I love you and you remind me of nature. <laughs> That's kind of what the song is. Uh, I wish it went a little, I want to hear Sierra wail. Yeah, I'm going to have my same Stapleton complaint. I want to hear Sierra wail, but um, look, if I could invite Sierra Farrell to collaborate on a track with me, I would. And if Zach Bryan invited me, I would. And now we're starting the back half of the album with the song called Jake's Piano slash Long Island. I think I'm into piano, Zach. Bound to quit smoking cigarettes. Best part to you here, we are still gone. That's a great vocal. I don't often think of Zach's sort of range because the most exciting things he does are he kind of shouts these lines, but the way he kind of howled that like so longingly, really cool. Still I think he's lost someone. Maybe the Long Island half of the song. I heard your father got sick of Long Island. I've been. This song's like a, an evolution of grief, sort of. Now it's kind of evolving into this darker thing where he's like, I, I drink too much, and it's like the anger, and you can feel with those drums coming in. I love the bass in this song. We'd always stay out too late Tuesday night. 
So I think the song, I think it starts with him reflecting on his own grief and his mother being lost. But then he wants to connect with someone else whose father is sick. And, and he relates to it and wants to care for her. Yeah, I think it's like an ex. Because you used to hold me by my gentle hands, but these aren't the hopeful hands you held before. So he's feeling dark. He's drunk and he dreams of this ex. I don't know. Feels tormented. Maybe the whole song is in fact just about this ex. I don't know. I'd have to listen to it a few more times, but it's very powerful. It's so tortured. Next one is called El Dorado, City of Gold. I put gold lighting. Ooh. Ooh, with the fiddle, but with the... Oh, I'm liking Basie Zach. Loving how this starts. Feels different for him. Oh, a real hook? I love it. That was like a real sort of like poppy hooky thing. El Dorado, Valifano, but like I don't remember what he says, but um, yeah, but the song's about like an old friend and he's like, what happened to him? Where, where'd you go? Are you doing well? Good line. Mama always said we looked handsome when we shaved. That song's cool. I mean, Zach just like wondering what happened to a friend that I think he served with. But damn it, where was the bridge and the final chorus? That chorus is so fun that I wanted to have a bridge and then get to the chorus one more time. Not many bridges on this album. I want some bridges, baby. I want some bridges. But that song, I love the sound of it. I like the bass. It just feels experimental. It feels different. Like, that song was cool to me. And I like kind of, we have a couple meta narratives that run through Zach's music. One is the, the friend that he's lost touch with where he's wondering how one of his boys is doing. That came up earlier on this album. I compared it to Oklahoma City. Kind of like how Highway Boys a little bit is. Like there's this camaraderie with the boys that Zach has. The other one I've noticed on this album is the coastline. Like if the sun was all over American Heartbreak, it's the coast all over this one. Next is the one I'm probably most excited to hear, which is I Remember Everything featuring Casey Musgraves. And she's a co-writer on it too. So immediately this is bringing me back to Jake's piano where he's referencing in this the beach towel rests on the drying line so we're on the coast um, just like he was talking about in that song how he remembers that knot that they tied on the beach and her hair is blowing the sand. So we're on the coast. Like this is a real, like he's remembering a sweet time in a relationship on the coast. Even like your daddy's 88 Ford, maybe like in a way he's implying that she was really close with her dad. And that's why when he was sick, he wanted to reconnect with her. I'm just feeling like these songs are connected. Pictures and passing time you You're drinking to ease your mind, but when are you gonna ease mine? Man. And it's cool to hear like a retort to Zach in his own songs where he's like, I'm reckless, I'm bad. And she's like, yeah, you are. The birds like souls meet. Strange words come on out of a man's mouth Man, I could have stayed in that song longer. Another one I want a bridge for. That song's so pretty. It's like all too well, Zach's version, where he's the villain, not the protagonist. He's like, you were begging me to stay, but my mind's broke. And he's looking to rot gut whiskey to ease his mind, but he's still thinking of that relationship. Casey's verse is so cool. She says, concrete feet, their love like burned them. The way that the concrete heat in the summer burns your feet. It was real, it was passionate. They remember it all too well. What a pretty song. What a cool song. Casey sounds great on it. I like how they trade off kind of who's on lead melody and who's doing harmony. And I totally think that that is the same relationship that is being referenced at the beginning of Jake's Piano. This one's called Tourniquet. Wait, is that first note the same as My Chemical Romance? No. <laughs> no. It's the second note. It's the second note. I'm loving the intros. Bandage up your body and your bones and your band-aids to turn and kill your toast to your crown.
You've been stabbed in the back and the rest of your back. I don't know if in this song, Zach is encouraging a friend that has been playing in all these bars and his face is getting thin, or if this song is someone talking to him. Like in the first verse, it said, if you're bleeding, like I'll make a tourniquet. Like one of those things they wrap around to, to, to stop the bleeding of a limb. And then the second verse, it says, I'll tourniquet your toes to the ground and just keep you here, keep you planted, keep you safe, hug you till you feel better. And so part of me kind of thinks this is someone talking to Zach saying like, I got your back, I will care for you. Apparently there was like that little interlude in the middle of the song kind of faded in the background noise. According to Genius, that was a clip from Streetcar Named Desire, which is interesting. And Marlon Brando is so like in that same American iconography, like James Dean that Zach would be drawn to. And Stanley Kowalski is like a reckless, awful, drinking, abusive, bad dude. And yet this desired heartthrob at the same time. So I don't exactly know what it's referencing or if maybe, maybe this song is more kind of how Blanche and Stella have each other's back. I don't know. I'd have to think more about it. I mean, I didn't even notice it fully. This next one features the Lumineers, which I'm pumped about, and I think they're like Zach's favorite band. It's called Spotless. And the, the guys, Jeremy and Wesley from the Lumineers, do have writing credits on this. Well, I am a believer in people pleasing to the fuck. I ain't spotless, neither is you. I like that hook. I ain't spotless, neither is you. It feels nice too because the, the words are so jumbled like in the verses. It's a very fast delivery. I think Zach says, I'm a self-destructive landslide. You can be the hill. I gotta say, that's like the best flow I've heard on this album. Remember jumping in the pool when we was fully clothed in August. We were soaking, choking, smoking in my shitty old apartment. And uh, that just worked. A bridge! It's gonna feel so good to sing this chorus now. I can't stop this, neither can you. And it's an evolving lyric. Cool song. Spotless. It's like, let's be honest about ourselves. Like, I'm not spotless, and neither are you. And if you want that, then I'm not the guy for you. But man, doesn't the chorus hit harder after a bridge? It does. Underutilized. I don't know, like, they recorded that kind of, like, purposely, sort of... Not perfectly in sync, but I think that and I remember everything. I sort of like hearing Zach write with other people. Like it brings this level of composure to his music that to me is quite exciting as a fan that has like been there for all the poetic meandering lyrics, which I love. Um, but it's also cool to hear him like have hooks and, and a little bit more simplicity in his music. Man, that melody of I ain't spotless, neither is you. It reminds me randomly of the song called Just Fine by G Love. Say I love to be just fine. I don't even remember how it goes, but next one's called Tradesman. Really pretty guitar. Oh, and that electric strum. Wish I was a tradesman learning from some beat down old lane. And everyone lately scaring me. Everybody seems a bit damn genius lately. This this has little bits of burn, burn, burn in it. Like just melodically, it reminds me of burn, burn. You know the old feeling of That's such an interesting reflection. If you, it, it reminds me a bit of um, on Quiet Heavy Dreams, there's that song, what the fresh is it called? Where he's like sawing logs. It's just called Quiet Heavy Dreams. That's why I can't think of the title. It's Quiet Heavy Dreams where he's like thinking about like, Saw and logs working $14 an hour, um, even quitting time. There's that theme of work, overtime. There's that theme of work, and he wants to be a tradesman. He wants to swing a hammer and feel the relief of 5 o'clock come around. I will say this. Having moved into this house and fixing up my house, the number of music people that contacted me and said, hey, can I come help you renovate? Like, I just feel a little soft. Like, I need a day like that. Um... It's immense. I think a lot of people have this sort of desire to be hardworking and yet we live in a world where it's not always required of us. We live in a place where we're detached from the realities of hard, strenuous work and Zach craves it. Ooh, this is a cool development happening. Give me something I can't fake that rich boys can't manipulate. That verse, that verse. This is like a capstone verse of, I think, who Zach Bryan is. Did you hear what he's really saying? 
There's something more that I need than accolades and sympathy. Fatiguing in the summer heat while they smoke big cigars. So give me something I can't fake that rich boys can't manipulate. Something real that they can't take. Because Lord, I'm not your star. Literally, he's just this disillusioned famous person. Everyone loves him. And he's like, I don't care. That doesn't make me the center of the universe. And, and actually, all of this that surrounds me makes me feel worse. I need something real. Give me a hammer to swing. Give me something that is not this. It's so Gatsby of him. So backdoor deals and therapy. The only cow I do not know if he said that at the beginning, but that's a funny line where he's like, it's all backdoor deals and therapy. That's what everyone around him is concerned with. And he's like, ugh. The real people out there have calluses, and I have a callus in my mind. I love this song. I relate to this. This is what it's like being a YouTuber. You're just like, I'm such a bitch compared to all the people that are working hard. Okay, we're down to just two more. This next one's called Smaller Acts. Okay, this also reminds me of Burn, Burn, Burn melodically. There's like a frog or something in this. It's either like a frog or a really high-pitched crow. No, I think it's a frog. Coastal Town. It's a big coastal album. Yeah, melodically that just really does remind me of Burn Burn Burn. But it's a really sweet song just kind of these like little glimpses of this woman she likes Prince songs she likes the mercury lounge she likes smaller acts very cool zackish bravado lyric as i'm calling them where he says she likes honey in her coffee and boys that use their backs it's a cool lyric you get the softness of like honey in the coffee but then like this wry like lusty line she likes boys that use their backs and now we're at the very last song called Oklahoman Sun. I think it's a song. It could be a poem. You can't hide where you're from with nightcrawler blood on your cast and thumb. Great lyric. He's like, look, you are, you are. <laughs> you're an Oklahoman son and a fisherman. You can't hide where you're from. Always be. What a reflection for the end of the album. Narratively, I didn't quite figure out that song. I think it's maybe about some like vagrant, like one of these guys or girls from back home. I, I couldn't even tell. Zach hasn't seen it in a long time and they're both maybe not feeling like themselves. I don't know. I'd have to listen again. It's hard when you're doing it live. Like I'd love to say I get it, but I didn't fully get it. But there is that kind of Oklahoma City-ish feeling of reconnecting with someone from your past. And I love the organ on that song. Zach, there, he mentions on there, like, I can't get this time back. His music has this effect on me where it really makes me think about the speed at which life is moving. It makes me like, I don't know how to explain this because it's not even logical. It's just what it does to your heart. But it just makes me want to not waste time. It always convicts me that I am. And maybe it's because he's so crazy. He's like, I want to live full time, overtime, go hard all the time. And like, there, there's a toxic side to that mentality as he sings about on his albums, like this, this need, this reckless need to keep moving. But I must say it makes me want to do that. My overall thoughts on the album are that it is so Zach. Like it is so reflective. I feel like on American Heartbreak, we had these songs like Billy Stay or Open the Gate. He was definitely telling stories that weren't necessarily his own. And this album feels, I agree with his letter, it feels so much like him. And I'd be lying if I wasn't like trying to put together some of the gossip in my head of like, all right, well, who had the sick father that maybe they had like a romance on the beach in Long Island? You know, it, there's a part of me that wants to play that game the same way I do when I listen to a Taylor Swift record. But it definitely feels like these are autobiographical tunes. I wish there were more bridges on the album. I like a bridge. And these are very kind of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, outro. Sometimes we get an instrumental break, but I like the hookier kind of moments that are on here. I love on Spotless that we got a bridge. I love, what's the other like really kind of hookier one? I enjoyed El Dorado had that catchy chorus. East Side of Sorrow, 
Overtime I loved. If I had to maybe pick my favorite tracks from the album, it, they are Overtime, East Side of Sorrow. What a hopeful song. Ticking. I'm never going to get over how pretty the chorus of Ticking is. I think Ticking is probably my very favorite song on the whole album. Jake's Piano slash Long Island. Certainly the most like ambitious musically on the album, I would say. I Remember Everything with Casey Musgraves. Gorgeous. Spotless is Cool. And Tradesman. Those are the ones that I love the most. So it's probably like... I think I just named seven songs, maybe. And the album, I would say, feels really in keeping with other Zach albums. It's sometimes quiet, sometimes brash, very reflective. I think I said in my review that I want to see a little bit more structure in Zach's songs. So I like the songs where there was a bit more of a structure. I think that's the next step for him. I think there has been a true revolution in country music with this Nirvana-like figure of Zach Bryan coming along and completely throwing the entire industry off balance and making them ask, kids like this stuff? They like this sort of meandering poetry of some sad guy screaming into the sky? And the answer is, yeah, they do. But now that that is such a style and we all have seen 800 gazillion dudes doing the Zach Bryan-ish thing, which I think is beautiful. I think in some ways he's this like invitation for males to express their like more intimate feelings that they otherwise maybe didn't feel as comfortable doing it's getting a little played out quickly and i think watching zach grow into this kind of american hit maker will be cool and i would like to see him kind of embrace a little bit more of these hookier moments like he kind of does on this album the sort of sloppy studio feeling Production is a choice. Taken as songs individually, I didn't always want them to be like that, but taken as an album, it does feel like it may have the effect of creating a sort of iconic legacy. Like this album does feel like it is captured in a moment in time, um, in his life and in the studio. So it's kind of cool. But I don't know, those are my loose thoughts on Zach Bryan's self-titled album. I forgot how long these take to shoot. So I hope you enjoyed it. I've been in this chair for like two hours. Let's do a check. Do I have blue paint on me? I'll have to zoom in and see if I stained my shirt. So I'll zoom in and see if I stained my shirt later. Um, until then, let me know your thoughts on Zach Bryan's self-titled. I love y'all so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.